Hello, everybody. Welcome to your virtual vacation to Croatia. As you enter tonight, please introduce yourself and where you're coming in from and why you're here tonight or what you like about Croatia or if you've ever been there or <clears throat> where you're dreaming of traveling next. We'd love to hear it. Just put it in the chat. Then a couple other things as we're coming in. Um, we have a Q&A uh, area. You can put your question there or you can put it in the chat. We'll be monitoring it and handling questions at the end of the evening. And everything that you put in the chat, please set your chat to panelists and all participants. That way everybody will see the questions you're asking and people can go, yeah, I want to know that question too. Welcome back, Mark from Maryland. Glad to see you made it in this evening. We love Croatia too. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is here and where are you coming in from? Let's see hear a lot of repeat names. Welcome. All right. Anthony L from New Jersey. Welcome back, Anthony. Yeah, we have, I, last time I checked, I think we had 69 registered for tonight. Oh, Victoria from Elm Grove, Marilyn from San Diego. Oh, now they're coming in so fast, I can't read them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Karen from Dallas is going for her dual citizenship with Croatia. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Wonderful. Congratulations. Hi, Rocky from Detroit. <laughs> Oh, Got and Sandy here from Canada. Vancouver. Oh, it looks like we have Matt oh. and Joe from Detroit too. Welcome. Karen from Edmonton. If I mispronounce your name, I'm so sorry. Please let me know. I grew up with my last name being butchered my whole life, so I totally get it. <laughs> Please let me know. Susie from San Francisco, Anna from Denver. Oh, okay. So Victoria said she was in Croatia in 1973. You gotta go back. Exactly. Did some changes. It's time to go Just back. Just a few, but you gotta go back. Oh, SoCal's in the house as well. Got Toronto, Denver. So is anybody booking any travel now that things are lightening up or loosening up? Anybody got anything on the agenda or any serious thoughts about planning anywhere? Put that in there. Share with us whatever's going on in your life in the world of travel and or culinary desires. Just oh, booked good. my next trip to Croatia today. Fantastic. Good for you, good. Karen. Oh, this is going to be a nice little tease for you. Karen, when are you going? Oh, October. Very nice. That's when I think I might go. I got to talk to Zelko about that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Rocky That's just right got here. back from Dubai. Oh, Very wow. nice. And Sri Lanka, too. I went yeah, we through have Dubai. a lot of great world travelers in our group. Yeah. Oh, we are going to Costa Rica in May. Oh, well, there we oh, go. David, when are you going to Costa Rica? He said in May, it says going to Costa Rica. Oh, in May. Good to yeah, be, but when in May, though? To, you'll have to pop on our next one. We're going to Croatia in February. So we're having a come with me or join you me. You mean trip. Costa Rica, right? Yeah, Costa yes. Rica in May. <laughs> Costa we're doing Rica. We're, our virtual vacation for Costa Rica is in May. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was wondering and, when he was going. I'm wondering if he can watch first. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. He's not going until the 25th. So he can make our <laughs> Costa Rica virtual vacation. Okay. It's, we'll just wait one more minute. Make sure everybody who wants to be here is here and then we'll get started. I think I'm going to start sharing my screen though to get ready. I can find the right screen. There we go.
Oh, Joe's nope. drinking Croatian wine. Good for Good you. For you. <laughs> I have my K I have my K vine, my trusty K vine from Costco. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we'll get started. Welcome everybody to Croatia, culinary treasure of the Adriatic. Um, my name's Heidi Thies and I'm one of the Eat, Drink, Travel associates that are your fearless tour guides ever so often about every other week where we all have our own travel agencies, as you can see listed here. You'll see these contacts listed several times tonight, as well as posted in the chat a couple times. If you have any questions about what you see tonight after tonight, or if you would like to investigate just what it might be to go to Croatia yourself, what it might take, contact any one of us. We're always excited to help you with that. There, this is a saying I thought was perfect for tonight. There is no Wi-Fi in the forest, but I promise you will find a better connection as we hopefully come out more and more from this whole pandemic and we start venturing out there. We're hopefully going to get a little bit away from our Wi-Fi and the things that are electronic and maybe get out into the forest and the mountains and the oceans. And I think we're all going to find a better connection when that happens. One of the things that's going to come up tonight is UNESCO World Heritage. There's World Heritage Sites and there's World Heritage um, Intangible Cultural Items. And Croatia is one of the top countries in the world for UNESCO World Heritage Items. And this is just a little blurb for, uh, explaining what that means. It has to meet particular criteria. The, the UN actually has a World Heritage committee and they evaluate sites and traditions and beliefs around the world to see if they are of significance on some level and then they designate them and it makes for a great travel uh, catalyst. I use that often when I'm booking travel for my clients because no matter what they're interested in, even if it's not architecture or something, a, a UNESCO World Heritage item usually is of interest on some level. Uh, our guest tonight, I have a little bio I want to share with you, and it's, if I start chuckling, just know it's because I <laughs> compiled all the other oh, appointments dear. I've had with her over the, over the last year since I met her. Um, her name is Zelka, and even though her parents dreamed, she, she never dreamed that she would have a career in tourism, no. otherwise they wouldn't have named her Zelka, which I wasn't sure what that meant. So I looked up the meaning of her name and all I got was a bunch of sites on how to swear in Croatian. So um, I don't know, maybe she can explain what that means when I turn the microphone over to her. Uh, she though has never had any doubts that she was born to do what she does. Starting out, Zelka was a tour leader and then a travel designer. And for the last couple of years, she served as director of sales and marketing with Calvados Club, one of our very good partners in Europe. She's dedicated, fun, and outgoing. I can vouch for that myself. Her biggest passion is presenting her native Croatia. I met Zelka last August at a virtual conference, and at every interaction we've had, she leaves me in stitches. I do want to share a little couple secrets about her. Her secret Starbucks name is Lily. Um, because that's the only thing when she comes to the States that the Starbucks barista can understand when they want to put her name on her cup. So now her U.S. name is Lily. And her superpower is time travel. Tonight, she's actually coming to us from the future as it's already 2 a.m. in Croatia tomorrow. So please lend your attention to my friend Zelka as she takes us on a culinary adventure in Croatia. Good morning from tomorrow. <laughs> this is actually the first time in, in my life when I say good morning from tomorrow. Actually, I'm calling from Croatia right now. It's 2 a.m. and I'm really happy to, uh, to be with you all uh, today. Um, 
So tomorrow it's going to be sunny in Croatia or today is or it already is and it's going to be a beautiful day and I wish it to you as well. Um, so uh, Heidi, can I just share my screen yes. now? Or? Yeah, you okay. should be able to share. I set it so you could grab it at any time. So okay, perfect. But I can too. <laughs> Good. So I hope that you can all see my screen. Yes. Uh, right now, you can. Good. Here we are. So. Um, even though it's 2 a.m., I'm really happy to be with he, uh, here with you today. Um, thank you, ladies, so much for this great opportunity to uh, present my beautiful country to you and, and to, to your clients. Um, I would say that uh, it's never too late or too or early to share the magic of uh, Croatia, uh, Croatia around the world. Um, as Heidi said, we are great partners for years now, and we've been creating memorable journeys and unique experience for our clients in Croatia and beyond countries for quite a long time. Um, even though we do Croatia and um, neighboring countries like Slovenia and Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia and so on, uh, today Croatia is going to be uh, in our focus. So as uh, pretty much everything today starts with uh, all these questions regarding COVID and the first one definitely is, can Americans travel to Croatia? And I'm so happy to say, yes, you can travel to Croatia. And if you wanna come, you can actually come tomorrow. It's, um, it's very easy to reach us. At this point, um, the only thing, um, at this point, you should just take one connection somewhere in Europe and fly into, uh, into Croatia. Uh, but uh, starting from uh, July, United will have direct connection between New York and Dubrovnik, which is really great thing for all of us. So Croatia will be closer than ever. Um, as I said, Croatia is open for international travels and Americans can enter the country for business and tourism purposes. Um, the rules are pretty simple. So uh, travelers who got their second COVID shot 14 days before their, their arrival to Croatia and those who have um, already recovered from COVID two weeks till six months before entering Croatia, you just need doctor certificate that uh, actually confirms your COVID status. Um, anyone else, uh, so travelers without the certificate can enter with negative PCR test or negative rapid antigen test. Um, as you still need negative PCR test for getting back to back home to uh, to the states, we'll be happy to arrange it for you before your departure. Here in Croatia, luckily, we don't have such a huge, um, let's say, pressure on our health system like in other uh, European countries, like other European countries do. So PCR tests in Croatia usually get, you get results within six or 12 hours, which is really, really quickly. Um, but let's get to fun part with some beautiful pictures and um, once again, welcome to, to Croatia, to my beautiful home. So um, Croatia is known as a country of uh, 1,000 islands, actually 1,200 to be precise, a country of exceptional natural beauties and turbulent history and cultural heritage that will wow each traveler. But Croatia is also a gourmet paradise starting from amazing wines and golden olive oils uh, and traditional gastronomy that actually combines all the influences that we have had during the history to rare truffles and the best oysters. Um, if you're ready, join me for a journey through the coast of Croatia inspired by our nips and zips of Croatia itinerary. We'll start with, um, with a map just to show you where our, part, our small part of the world actually actually lies. We are surrounded with, um, with Italy and, uh, at the south and Hungary at the north and um, uh, Austria is just here behind neighboring Slovenia. Um, 
so uh, we are close to all this all these great uh, great destinations and today uh, we'll start our trip in I will just turn my pointer in so you can you can follow me much much easier now I think so we'll start our trip today in uh, in the northern region of Istria then we'll travel through Plitvica lakes down south to Split in Split, we'll hop a private motorboat and we'll discover Dalmatian islands, starting from the island of Hvar, then we'll move to Vis, Korčula, Mlet, and we'll finish our trip to Dubrovnik. Um, along the way, I will point out some amazing uh, experiences and some interesting facts. And um, should you have any questions, I think that chat box is open for you and the ladies will follow it and I'll, I'll answer all your questions um, later on after the presentation. Let's start with Istria. Istria is really a fine melange of picture-perfect landscape and exquisite gastronomy. Even though Istria has an international airport of Pula, you can always consider flying into Venice, which is only three hours away. So very, very close. Um, the coastal part of Istria is dotted with beautiful small stone built Roman towns and inland is full of tiny medieval hilltop towns that overlook vineyards and olive groves. Um, at this slide, you can see a picture perfect town of Rovin. The colorful buildings facing the sea and winding uh, narrow alleys going uphill to St. Euphemia Church hide beautiful galleries and small bars and shops. And this is actually where, th where that unique Mediterranean charm lives. Um, Istria is also home to beautiful Brioni National Park. It was a formal summer residence of Yugoslavian President Tito, where he hosted um, lots of celebrities uh, like Sofia Loren, for example. It's home to uh, Pula Arena or an amphitheater dating back from Roman times. But it's also home of delicious, delicious red wine, Terran, uh, and white Malvasia, and uh, rewarded olive oils. But the true star of Istrian gastronomy are definitely truffles. Um, in Istria, uh, we have black and white truffles. There are only a couple of regions in the world where, where this exquisite funks can be found. Um, Istria is luckily one of them, um, and here I would, I would like to present our, one of our extraordinary experiences uh, that includes private travel hunting with a local family. So this specific family, they are travel hunters in third generation. They just got baby, a baby girl a couple of months ago, so we are sure that there is fourth generation coming uh, to do this same, same job. Um, um, the young lady, Vishnya, the blonde girl in this picture, she takes clients to the woods with um, uh, their special trained dogs and they, trial, uh, they hunt for truffles. Um, I have to mention that this is very hands-on experience. So once you, you get to experience this, you will definitely get dirty and muddy and I promise you'll love it. Um, and after the hunt, um, Vishna's mom, Mrs. Vanda, uh, she cooks for the clients or teaches you how to prepare handmade pasta or gnocchi with, uh, with truffles. This is definitely uh, one of a kind experiences for all foodies and definitely not to be missed when, when in Croatia. But it's also great for families with kids because kids just love running around the woods with, uh, with dogs. And it's also uh, uh, very nice for honeymooners because the whole setting of, the, of that estate where the, the experience actually takes place is so very romantic. So uh, their, their house is located at the top of this beautiful hill. Their woods are right beneath the hill and it overlooks beautiful um, medieval town of Buzet, just opposite the house. Sunsets are just magical there. Um, 
from Istria. So during this presentation, you will see the map a couple of times as we move from one part of the country to uh, to another, just to make it easier for you to follow how everything uh, how everything looks like. So now we are moving to from Istria all the way down south to Split. As you can see on the map, um, it is a, a bit longer transfer. It's a full day uh, actually transfer from uh, Istria to Plitvice, it will take you three hours uh, ride and from Plitvice to Split another three hours. But uh, it's definitely worth it because along the way you will stop and visit the first UNESCO site on, uh, on in this presentation, it's called Plitvice Lakes National Park. Um, this is the most beautiful uh, national park in Europe and uh, taking a four hours walk around the park will definitely leave you spe speechless. As I said, um, it's UNESCO protected national park. It's a world heritage and uh, Plitvice Lake, lakes are consist of uh, 16 lakes interconnected by stunning waterfalls and surrounded by lush woods. Uh, Turkey's colors of the lakes and the numerous waterfalls makes, makes Plitvice not to be missed the destination of every trip uh, to, uh, to Croatia. For nature lovers, I would definitely recommend spending at least two days at the national park area where you can enjoy hikes, uh, horseback riding, or even discover caves at the surrounding area. And then just three hours away from Plitvice Lakes, you will reach my hometown. Welcome to Split. Uh, if you didn't know, Split is the most beautiful town in the world. Of course, it's voted by, by, by locals, <laughs> but once you get there, you will definitely um, recognize the vibe of, um, of, uh, of the town. Um, of all the cities in Croatia, uh, Split definitely has the most peculiar beginning. So let's see why. Um, in a way, uh, the first inhabitant and the founder of this town was a, was a Roman Emperor Diocletian. 1700 years ago. He's remembered as the last emperor prosecutor of Christians. Uh, he was born in a, to a humble family, once slaves, and he rose through the ranks of Roman military to eventually become the emperor that actually rescued Roman Empire in times of decline. Um, he was the only Roman emperor who abdicated to spend last of his days in this amazing part of the world. The rumor is that he did it to grow cabbage. We'll never know if it's true, but it's a definitely fun story. Um, the emperor probably couldn't have imagined that in his wildest dreams that one day his lux luxurious villa would become the core of Split, the vibrant coastal metropolis today, again, protected by UNESCO. Um, this is something that our clients learn in um, especially our clients who come with their families with kids, they learn it in a very special way. Uh, their history lesson actually starts in, at nearby uh, town of Salona. It's an archeological site today, um, but it was the birthplace of Diocletian, Diocletian where, where clients actually do real archeological excavations with real archeologists. So that's where the tour starts, where everything actually started. And then they move to the old town of Split. Um, I will just mention that our palace, the Oclesian Palace, it isn't a museum. It's literally a living monument. It's a place where people live. So as you walk through the town, um, you will smell people cooking lunch, you will see kids going to school, you will see, I don't know, ladies doing laundry. Um, it's very vibrant. Uh, there's, it's full of small bars and galleries and restaurants. And here on this very square, right in front of our cathedral that you can see on, on this slide, um, every evening there is a live music and um, People just sit uh, at this stairs, having their cocktails and just enjoying, enjoying the, the, their time. It's definitely one of the things that you must do when, uh, when in Split. 
but not, don't worry. Split isn't only about the history. We have some delicious experiences here as well. And uh, now uh, we'll start with the uh, private food and wine pairing with a private chef and sommelier. So these two fun guys um, first do a uh, green market walk and shopping with, uh, with clients. They never know what they will cook for you. They will know only if it's fish or meat. And uh, everything actually depends of the offer at the green market and fish market that they can find um, at this day. They will take you through local ingredients and they, you, they will teach you how Saturday's shoppings at the green market are like religion in Croatia. That's something that your grandma's teach you how to do, and that's something that you must do. So um, it's it's like a really big part of, uh, of, uh, of our lifestyle. Um, later on, uh, they will take you to very, let's say exclusive uh, venue that's located at Mount Kozjak from where you have beautiful views of uh, Split Bay and, uh, and islands. Um, and uh, they will actually prepare food and wine pairing in a stone built uh, house surrounding by vineyards. Those vineyards are again, amazing connection with United States because it's proven by DNA that Californian Zinfandel actually originates from Croatia. That is one of the things that Croatia gave to the world to, to, uh, to Americans at this very point. At some point during this presentation, I will take, uh, tell you a couple of more uh, details that you would never think that uh, would come or were invented in country of only 4 million people uh, uh, living there. So um, this is one of our top rated experiences and uh, it's not only for foodies, but also for clients who wish to experience something very unique, very exclusive. I will just mention that some of the wines that um, Ivan de Sommelier serves uh, during this food and wine pairing come from boutique wineries in, uh, and are produced in very, very small production of 300 bottles. So that, get, that gives even more to the exclusivity of this, um, of this uh, experience. And this brings us to something completely different. Um, the star of today's presentation is Soparnik. Again, UNESCO protected dish now. Here in Croatia, we also have UNESCO protected way of singing and uh, so many UNESCO protected sites, but that's something that you have to come to Croatia to learn more about. Um, I'm sure that ladies have already shared the recipe with you and I hope some of you already tried to, uh, to make it. I bet it tasted really, really good baked in, in oven, but um, the secret is that the true flavor of Soparnik actually comes from the smoke and ashes. Um, Soparnik making presentation takes place in a humble home of Mrs. Anka, the lady that you can see on, on this photo. Um, she has worked on land uh, for her whole life, uh, growing different kinds of veggies and selling them on split green market. She doesn't speak a word of English, but once you meet her, once she welcomes her, uh, welcomes you in her home, you, you just feel that she gives you everything that she has. Um, this is definitely the most authentic experience in our portfolio, and uh, it's just because of her. Um, but let's get back to, uh, to Soparnik. Um, it's actually poor man's dish. So it's... Um, it's prepared of very, very simple, simple ingredients. Um, the, uh, the dish and the recipe actually dates back to 15th century when Ottoman Empire conquered all this area around Split. Um, the recipe of today's Soparnik dates from that very time and it's still prepared at the same way as it was prepared back in uh, 15th century. The whole process take, takes place in so-called black, black kitchen. Uh, here in Croatia, we call it komin. Uh, all village homes had this 
one divided room, room that is divided from the rest of their house with an open fireplace. It's always black because of the smoke and because of the, because of the ashes. Um, the fireplace where Soparnik is, uh, is baked has to be very, very heated and very clean to bake Soparnik in a proper way. So only one type of wood can be used for that exact fire. Then Teta Anka spreads the dough. That, that's like, Soparnik is really big, you know, it comes only, it's almost a one meter in diameter. So it's, it's huge. Um, then she adds chopped uh, Swiss chard and mixed with salt, a little bit of olive oil and finely chopped yellow onions. Then she covers it with another layer of dough and twists the edges so the chard couldn't, uh, couldn't come out. And then she cleans the fireplace and puts soparnik on that heated um, fireplace actually. And she covers it with hot ashes and after 15 minutes uh, you get, she takes it out, cleans all the ashes and spreads olive oil and finely chopped garlic all over it. Um, all the edges are crunchy and the middle part of Soparnik is, uh, is very soft and it blends perfectly with, uh, with red wine. As I said, this was poor man's food. Today, we, here in Croatia, especially in Dalmatia, we can't imagine any kind of celebration without serving Soparnik. So um, when you experience this, uh, uh, this Sopardic making experience. It's so funny. It makes me always laugh because uh, <laughs> Tatanka always packs some of the Sopardic leftovers for you to bring it with so you can have it next day for breakfast. <laughs> she still doesn't get that breakfast is served in hotels <laughs> and that you won't be hungry. It's like like old grandma's school, you know, you have all you have you always have to have some food. Uh, with you. <laughs> um, and now, after this uh, delicious dish, we are back on um, on a map because it's time to hop on a private motorboat and cruise the island. I hope you're ready for this uh, amazing experience as well. So, um, no experience of Croatia is complete without spending at least one day on a motor motorboat and discovered uh, discovering hidden calves uh, at one of 1,200 Croatian islands. Um, the only the only ones who can be excused from this experiences are the ones who suffer from severe um, seasickness. So if if it isn't severe, you still must experience it. Um, even though uh, the islands are spread all over Croatian coast, from the very north through uh, to the south, um, this part of the country known as Dalmatia, and uh, yes, Dalmatian dog breed originates from this part of the world, um, uh, is the most popular for boating because here we have it all. We have secluded bays, we have uh, historical towns located at the islands, um, we have beach bars, and nightlife, everything in that in that small um, small area. So something for all the tastes. Um, our signature itinerary called Island Hopping starts in Split here, and in four days it it takes you through the islands of Hvar, Vis, Korčula, Mlet, and you will finish in Dubrovnik. Of course. Um, Usual yacht charters um, are, are done in seven days. They usually cover all this area, but um, considering the fact that um, our clients usually have 10 to 12 days for their Croatia adventure, uh, four days on the boat is really optimum and gives you opportunity to, um, to see all these uh, most important uh, places of interest. Um, uh, we have boats of different sizes for different kinds of budgets, so don't hesitate to uh, to contact your travel advisors for more more information. 
And um, you can also decide if you wish to overnight on board or, in, or take advantage of all the comfort that hotel room has to offer. So it's either or, you can combine, we can be really, really flexible. And that flexibility is actually the whole magic of this, uh, of this experience. So let's move to the fun part. First, uh, we are in the, at the island of Hvar. Uh, Hvar is known as the sunniest place in Europe, um, and it's definitely the most visited Croatian islands, uh, island. It's famous for its nightlife during the summer season, which is June till, till September. And in the rest of the year, Hvar, Hvar is very calm and serene, so perfect for outdoor activities and discovering secluded villages. Simming season in Croatia starts in late May, early June, and lasts till mid-October. So it's very, it's very long. Um, the guardians of Hvar town are Pakleni Islands, the, the islands that you can see on this, uh, on this slide, um, where, client, where you can find a beach of your own or just enjoy beach bars. I will also mention that here in Croatia, we don't have those long sandy beaches. So our coast isn't like that. There are some sandy beaches at the island, quite small and quite remote, but um, majority of our beaches are pebbled or rocky. The greatest advantage of that uh, is that our waters, because of that reason, are so clear. So, um, um, it's sometimes when you stop with a boat in, in some bay, it's really, you just can't wait to jump into water directly from the, from the, from the boat. And it doesn't matter if you're seven or 77, the feel, it feels the same, you know, you just get wild. Um, it's also important to mention that our waters are very safe. We don't have like big waves and very strong winds and uh, we don't have any kind of this, um, um, I don't know, sharks or poisoned fishes or things like that. So you can just relax and swim and nothing will bite you <laughs> or take you away. No worries here in, in, in Croatia. Um, uh, then we'll visit uh, Island of Vis. So this is a very remote Croatian island. It's very far away. And until 1990s, 1990, uh, this island was a military base of formal Yugoslavian army. For that reason, it was unreachable for, um, for foreigners. And uh, that actually um, kept the authenticity of, of the whole island and, uh, and the place. Um, once we had some friends visiting from, from this island and um, they were talking in between themselves, you know, talking, talking, talking. And the only thing that I could understand was rock and roll. <laughs> so they have their own language that, uh, I mean, people who went to normal school somewhere in Croatia just can't, uh, can't understand. It's completely different than a Croatian standard, standard language. Um, Near island of Vis, we have Bishavo Island with its unique uh, blue cave. This is one of the most visited sites at Croatian islands, and uh, sometimes um, uh, there, there can, it can be quite crowded. But for that reason, uh, our clients enjoy VIP entrance procedures uh, with no waitings. Um, uh, so when you want to enter the Blue Cave, you have to get on a smaller rowing boat and then enter in the, in the very cave. And uh, I mean, when you have such a limited time to spend in Croatia, it's our job to make sure that you take the most of it. Um, from this, we will move uh, to the island of Korčula. To be honest, this is my favorite Croatian island. Um, it's known as a birthplace of Marco Polo, the great world, world traveler. Some of you will, will probably ask, like, wasn't Marco Polo Venetian? Well, uh, he was, but at that time, uh, Korčula was part of Venetian Republic. So that's the only reason why he was Venetian. Um, with its beautiful architecture and rich cultural and his historical heritage, Korčula is one of those places that will definitely surprise each traveler. 
It's an island of great gastronomy, cherished at local restaurants like LD or Tavern Mate or Filippi. And it's an island of exquisite white wines. So when you get to Croatia, you just must try the wine called Poshif. That's the only thing that I'm going that I'm tr that I'll try to spell th this evening. So it's P O S I P. It's white wine and it's a must. Um, and there are definitely it's an island of uh, charismatic uh, local people. This is something. This is. Uh, the place where you will see, um, I don't know, uh, processions and grannies going to the church and um, the whole vibe of that old Mediterranean is actually um, housed here in this, in this small town. Uh, and the, our last stop on our way to Dubrovnik will be another national park. Um, this time it's island of uh, Mlet. It's uh, unique because, it, because of its lush greenery and the fact that on this island we have two lakes. And in the middle of one of those lakes, we have another small, uh, another small island with just a small monastery on it. Um, kayaking at the lake or biking around it are just like amazing experiences. And uh, we are finally in, uh, in Dubrovnik, a town called uh, the Pearl of Mediterranean. And I believe that uh, the town itself doesn't need any, uh, any wide introduction. Um, once a mighty republic, uh, today Dubrovnik is also known as a King's Landing. Uh, because uh, it's one of the, the places where famous Game of Thrones were filmed. Um, it's for me it's always like so interesting how did that small republic called the Dubrovnik Republic with a pop population of about 30,000 people survive for for almost five centuries surrounded by great Ottoman Empire and Venetian Republic well the answer is that they had exquisite diplomatic skills um they traded and negotiated with everyone, including the Sultan, Pope, and Venetian Dutch. Uh, the Brobdick Republic had the smallest military navy and the biggest merchant navy at the Mediterranean at that time. Uh, they had sewage system in 13th century. They invented quarantine, what a popular word, word in the last year for all passengers coming to the town. And they were, listen to this, they were the first country to recognize United States of America. Wow, right? Um, in addition to famous Dubrovnik city walls that everyone knows how they look like, the Dubrovnik Republic built another impressive wall um, around small town of Stone. Walls were built to protect one of the most important trade goods at that time, and that was salt. Here on this slide, you can see uh, salt pools, uh, and from these pools, we even today we get uh, we get salt. Uh, today, stone walls are the second biggest stone-built wall in the world after the Great Wall of China. So that's also something that that small Republic managed to uh, manage to build, but there is one more thing that they did, and that's um, the reason why you have to bring your passports when you travel from Split to Dubrovnik by land. So at that time, um, they were so smart. Uh, they actually sold part of their territory to Ottoman Empire to make sure that they don't have land border with Venetian Republic. Uh, today, that small part that they sell, sell, uh, sold to, uh, to, um, to, uh, to Turk, Turks, to Ottomans, is part of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And so when you travel from Split to Dubrovnik, you have to cross the border 
we are probably the only country in the world when you travel from from south to uh, from north to south where you have to bring your passport with. So when I go from from Split to Dubrovnik, I have to bring bring my passport uh, with. We are building a bridge right now. Actually, Chinese do, but uh, that that bridge will help us bypass that uh, that small part of um, of Bosnia. Uh, on our way down, but it's really very, very interesting fact. Um, Stone is also known for its famous oysters that people grow uh, in this calm bay since Roman times. Um, our clients learn about oysters in, and taste them in a very, very special way. Um, when you come to Croatia and if you love oysters, you will ho hop on a boat with an um, oyster farmer, his name is Dennis. He will take you to his farms. He, he will take oysters for you directly from the water and you will taste those, those oysters at his private island. So pay attention now. At that island, there is no electricity. There is no running water. There is no um, traffic, nothing. The only thing that you have there is like pure nature um, pine trees, crickets, and unfortunately, Wi-Fi, but I'm working on that. Um, this area, this brings us back to, uh, to wines and winemaking, uh, because that area that continues from, from uh, Stone is known, um, it, it, the name of the peninsula, it's Peleshat Peninsula, uh, but it's known as Croatia Nepa Valley. Uh, in this area, we have uh, the best creation red wines, only red wines at this, at this uh, peninsula. Um, as we always like to give our clients the best of modern winemaking, um, which is in this specific case, Corta Catarina Winery. By the way, it, this winery is owned by a US businessman from Minnesota. Um, we also like to give them best of the local, which is Milos Family Winery. Milos Family produces organic wines for five generations now. And it's interesting to know that even today, everything that they do in their vineyards is done manually. They have never had any kind of mechanization in their vineyards. And trust me, uh, after visiting uh, the vineyards and after learning about literally lifetime work and dedication, you will appreciate each drop of their wine in a very, very special way. Uh, so far, I think that I didn't, uh, I haven't mentioned any, uh, any hotels in Croatia. That doesn't mean that we don't have any, but um, it's interesting that here in Croatia, we don't have this huge luxury hotel brand. So we don't have Four Seasons, we don't have Amman, we don't have one only, but we have so beautiful um, local hotels, um, some of them family owned, that um, give you a real sense of place. You know, this, these hotels can be only where they are. For example, this first one is a Relais Chateau property with uh, surrounded by vineyards. By the way, this is very social distancing friendly hotel because all the, um, there are no hallways or um, this um, indoor social areas. So you enter your rooms from, from the outside. This hotel is surrounded by, uh, by vineyards and they also have on-site winery with, uh, of course, premium, premium uh, wine labels. Um, another one is located at the island of Korčula, and the theme of this hotel are the journeys of Marco Polo. So each of five residences was decorated to present one of the stops of his Tale of Silk journey. So you have India, you have Korčula, you have Arabia, Ceylon, China, Venice. Um, in Split, for example, you have beautiful hotel, which is True Candy. It's located literally a stone throw from the cathedral. So with hand painting ceilings, with, um, with furniture from the 15th and 16th century. Uh, when you enter those places, you, it's like, you feel like you opened like, a, I don't know, it's, it's like time travel, but not to future, but to past. <laughs> but it really gives you uh, this um, 
as I said, sense of place. And that's something that I think everyone enjoys when, uh, when traveling. Of course, there are modern hotels with, um, with beautiful views and, um, and everything, all the facilities that, uh, that you might need. And uh, we are here to take you beyond. We are here to give you uh, our Croatia, to give you Croatia that, uh, that we love. Uh, I will finish with this. I need a zip of coffee first and then zip of water. <laughs> yeah, it's two it's two in the morning. So it, can you I'm say actually, five o'clock somewhere? Okay, so <laughs> almost three. It's are, almost are you ready three. for me? Are you ready for me to take the camera back or take the uh, screen back? <laughs> Are we? Yes, yes. Just, a, just a second. I will stop sharing right now. Okay. That there we go. So many you. gorgeous pictures. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Heidi. There is one thing I would like to share, if possible. Um, yes. One. Of yeah, ours? you can. Can I go? Yeah, ahead? go ahead. You should be able to take it back from me right now. Okay. Go ahead. Just really quickly. One of our guests here tonight, um, David and Jen from Wisconsin, they have actually made the Sporanic. And I want to share that with you. This is how it turned out. And from what they said, it tasted Whoa. fantastic. Bravo. So very good. Nice. Awesome. Hey. That You'll have to fantastic. share now with the rest of go. us. We're all expecting some in the mail. Perfect. Did you bring enough for the class? <laughs> <laughs> that's what i want to know did you break it up for the class one of the uh, q a questions earlier was you were spelling wait, wait. The name of that white yeah wine. wait candace we just hold that one thought because we're just okay. gonna i'm just gonna uh share a couple things here before we get to the q a um oh, okay. and if i can make this go there we go um Oh, I got to get rid of do you. Can you see those little pictures of us or do you just see my screen? I see. Do you just see your screen? I see the screen. Okay, with good. Me. Okay. Um, these are, again, just to remind you, and I forgot to introduce everybody when I got going tonight. I was so excited to get to the presentation that I totally skipped over my, my associates. Um, I want to introduce you to Angela Ursherwood out of Wisconsin with Olive and Atlas Travel Design, Candace Stearns, Stay Balanced Travel out of the Detroit area, serving all of Michigan and beyond. Maria Stephanopoulos has Ingenious Travel. She's our Florida contingent. And Susan's not able to be with us tonight. She is Ships and Trips Travel in Tennessee. All of the travel advisors who sponsor Eat, Drink, and Travel can help you with any Croatia itinerary you would like and any other travel you might be interested in. We serve the entire world. And I do want to share with you that just before we got started, Zalka made a very generous offer to us. Anyone on tonight's presentation who wants to book something in Croatia and needs a little bit of encouragement if you make your deposit for a 10 night itinerary or more to Croatia um, by the 14th of May, Zelka will throw in a Sopornik um, cooking demonstration with, I, I can't say her name. What's her name again, Zelka? The, the cook, who, Yes, yes, her, what she said. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I, and she was supposed to originally be with us tonight, but uh, that stupid thing that we won't even give it name to uh, has got her quarantined with her family, I understand. So Zelka, you did a fabulous job of pinch hitting and being the Sparna, uh cook tonight. We appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Uh, coming up next, we have a Costa Rica presentation on May 11th. And I, I don't know if we're ready to reveal, but there's gonna be a special surprise along with that. Um, and then on May 25th, we have Adair Manor in Ireland, which is off the charts spectacular. Then on June 12th, we're going to do another Saturday because the Egypt is going to be alive. They're going to be live. And so we're doing that on Saturday morning again to try and uh, give more live opportunities and also people who work during the week and 
or too tired by night. You can also follow us at any one of our Instagram handles. And then to keep up on future events, be sure to check any of our meetups as well as uh, private Facebook groups for eat, drink, travel, take a virtual vacation. And then we have YouTube channels where we post our past recordings as well. Now, before we get into the crux of Q&A, this question is asked every time we do a presentation. So I'm just going to talk about it right now so we can move on to the other more pertinent questions. Substitute Croatia, uh, whatever country or whatever presentation destination we're doing, what is the starting price for a Croatian itinerary? Well, we don't know. <laughs> and why we don't know is because every one of us is a boutique custom design travel advisor. It depends, there are so many variables, we would be doing you a disservice if we gave you even a ballpark because it could be more, it could be less. The airfare depends upon what city you're leaving on, how many, how many um, connections, those type of things, which hotels, what type of room in a hotel, what, inter, what uh, special activities you select. So we really can't tell you, but every single one of us will do a complimentary, no obligation consultation so that you can find out what Croatia would cost for you. So I suggest that you contact one of us. It doesn't cost you anything at all to just get more information. And we don't want to sell you something you don't want to go on. So you're safe to contact us. And by now, hopefully we're your friend. You see us every two weeks. So come on, give us a call. Okay. With that, again, I'm going to leave this slide up so you can get our information. And I think Maria is going to put this contact information in the chat so you can cut and paste okay. it, or copy and paste it. Um, also, yeah. you can save the chat by hovering over the three little dots up to the right of the, your name in the chat box. And there should be a button that says say chat. So you can have everything that was in the chat. And with that, I think Candace is going to list off the questions and I will put mute on my mic and let Velka answer that. So the very first question was when you were talking about that specific white wine that started with a B. I couldn't type it fast enough. So can you explain the the right the white <laughs> I the, white wine. Wine. <laughs> the white wine at uh, at the at the island of uh, Korčula it's called Poship so it's P like Peter P O S I P P O S I V see so I heard B and it's P like Paul or Peter <laughs> so. exactly exactly and, and what was the um what was the location again Island of Korčula. Please don't ask me to spell that because it's <laughs> 3 a.m. here. Okay. Okay. I will. I, I will. I will. I just have to write it down. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so bad. Okay. Very good. Very good. I just I just threw so. it in the chat for all of my my wine uh, connoisseurs. Was it P O S I B like boy or B like Victor? Uh, I'm sorry for the wine. Yes. The last letter. The last letter is P as a Paul or Peter again. So you have oh, two oh, P's. So the first one is P and the it, last we one both is got P. It wrong. <laughs> hey, yeah. Angela's got some and good ears. I apologize. I think it's because you and I both had some wine tonight, Candace. That's probably it. <laughs> and the island is Korčula. It's K O R C U L A. We got that. And I spell so good because I had some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was another question from um, Susan. She had asked, are there many restaurants that serve gluten-free items or is this difficult to find? No, it isn't difficult to, it isn't difficult to find. Uh, we have people who, who suffer from, from intolerance for gluten here in Croatia as well. 
my daughter is one of them as well. So it isn't it isn't difficult. Uh, the only thing that cannot be made uh, gluten free is actually soparnik. We tried. I mean, Tetanka tried to make it, but uh, it just uh, it just didn't it it didn't work. So um, no soparnik for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I, I uh, married into a Greek family and we have, you know, chicken lemon rice soup that is so very Avgo famous. Lemono. Avgo lemono. Yes, Avgo lemono. Exactly. And I have made it um, gluten free with cauliflower rice, but it's really not the same. <laughs> yeah. So some things you just can't do. Exactly. Yeah, for, for somebody, I actually have a follow-up oh, question to sorry. that. No, no worries. Um, so for anybody with a food intolerance, is that something that should be pre-scheduled as much as possible to let somebody know? Or are they the chefs good with making alterations once you walk into a restaurant in order? So when you order in the restaurant, you will order gluten-free pasta or something like that. So they all have it in their restaurants and they serve um, gluten-free options without, without any problems. Uh, as uh, many of our clients actually eat in those local estates, you know, and really make that meal an experience, um, that's something that should be advised in advance uh, because it's not a restaurant you know we they just like purchase for that for that special event so but anything can be arranged it, we we can i mean i had a, i had a jewish couple in croatia for i don't know two weeks uh, they were kosher in croatia we don't have kosher restaurants but we managed to arrange everything so it can be done. As long as we know in advance, everything can be done. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. And I don't see any other questions. We just had tons of people commenting about how wonderful the presentation was. And oh, um, thank you. David, yeah. And, and David and Jen said, if you're in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, he has leftovers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I love Maybe it. you should just forward me that photo because I think that Tatanka will be thrilled knowing that Soparnik was actually made in Wisconsin. <laughs> That's great. Well, he That's... did put some Wisconsin cheese in there, so. Oops. Yeah, because oh. Wisconsinites put cheese in everything. Sorry. Oh, really? We <laughs> even put it in that. our <laughs> eggs for breakfast. <laughs> it's just, it, it, we put it on apple pie. I mean, no. Cheese goes on on everything in Wisconsin. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Um, well, thank you again so much, Zelka. Thank you all who. We had another question come through, oh, Heidi. Did. Okay, great. Go. How many UNESCO heritage sites are there, Zelka? A lot, <laughs> a lot. I I don't I don't know the number. You know, that's something that I have to always check um, on uh, online. Because there are always some new things uh, come pop out on on those lists. So for example, um, uh, Croatian lace is also UNESCO protected. I already mentioned klapa singing. Um, for example, near Split, you have a small town of Trogir, which is like 30 minutes ride from Split, which is entire UNESCO heritage. Then again, an hour away, we have this small town of Šibenik with beautiful cathedral that's also UNESCO heritage. Dubrovnik is UNESCO heritage. So it, there are so, so, so many details. But what I forgot to mention in, in the presentation, and I promised that I will. So did you know that actually electricity was invented by Croatian Nikola Tesla? Or pen was invented by Croatian Mr. Penkala. So uh, I don't know. Um, Parachute, torpedo, uh, identification by fingerprint. It was invented by a, a one police officer at from Hvar Island. Um, so 
I mean, it's it's so incredible to know that Croatia has given so much to the world. And again, there is only 4 million of us. Not to mention that we almost won World Cup in, in soccer for two times, but almost. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best um, women ski, uh, skiers. Heidi, how do you say ladies who ski? <laughs> uh, female or women uh, ski racers. Okay, so... That <laughs> Yannick you know, is, she a, is she a speed skier or a tech skier? You no, know. <laughs> she was everything. She was everything. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I know who you're talking about, and her name is escaping me right now. For it's Yannick Kostelic. All about ski racing. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. We, I don't know. We had um, uh, at one Olympics. I, I think it was 1990. Four, I think in, in Barcelona, um, Croatian national team, that's actually when, when Croatia first started as, a, as an independent country, uh, we played in the finals of Olympics with, uh, with the US dream team. At that time, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and everything. And they beat, the, that, they beat us up in, in the finals, but that's fine, you know? <laughs> Again, um, we are small but very very proud and um yeah one of the there's things, lots of lots of things to give to the world one of the things that i find so fascinating about your country too is the huge diversity of uh topography and climate and and environments i mean you have the mountains backed up to the alps or the dolomites there and you have um, all the way down to it's almost like a rainforest atmosphere in the waterfall parks and then you have yeah. the Adriatic Sea and I mean it's you really can see the type of thing anything that you'd want to see in a foreign country it, you can find it in Croatia it's it's pretty amazing you mentioned um you mentioned the singing I didn't hear you mention it in the presentation, but you just alluded to the fact, and I think you said it too quickly, and I really want people to hear about this because it was something that I found fascinating, the, the UNESCO singing, um, and I can't pronounce it. It's it, it's Klapa singing. It's, uh, it's the way we call it. Klapa is, uh, um, it means like a group of friends in, um, in slang. In, 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 local, uh, in, in local slang here in, uh, in Dalmatia. It's uh, a cappella way of singing. When you usually have uh, eight men um, singing a cappella with different uh, tonalities and uh, voices, and that's something that you can also experience in split. I'm so lucky because just in, um, two, two buildings from mine, uh, uh, each Thursday we have one klapa practicing, um, so the 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 whole neighborhood is uh, outside on balconies listening to them. It's uh, it's an amazing experience. It's really it's it's really something dramatic, especially if you hear it in split in vestibule, which is very acoustic. Uh, so. Um, it, if you can Google it, you, you can you can uh, hear a couple of songs online. So it's Klapa, K L P A. Okay. K L A P A. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was wait. I was wondering if there was a vowel in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now yeah, I do want to know what does your name mean before we go. What does your name mean? in in our language if we can translate so um the it means that uh, that uh, my parents i that i was their wish so uh oh Zhenya yes because means wish, wish. i did find that a wish came true yeah. oh that's so yeah. nice so it's uh, it's it's definitely tongue breaking, but uh, but it has nice nice meaning. So uh, yeah. All right. Any other questions? Well, thank you again, and you with us. To travel is to take a journey into yourself. We hope this 
remainder of the year and going forward that you'll consider not only taking a journey into yourself, but maybe taking a journey with one of us and maybe to Croatia, because I know Zulka will take very good care of any of us that go there. I absolutely so. will. <laughs> All right. Thank you Thanks so everybody. much for this great opportunity. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Now, do I... I, last time I had the big panic because I ended the meeting and I wasn't sure I was, I had recorded it. <laughs> so man. it just ends, it just ends when I, when right? you close it. Yep. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night.